without much argumentation, but you put forward strong accusation and emotions. And all this came to my mind when I listened to the first talk. Uh, I'd like, first of all, uh, to say that uh, I has been personally acquainted with Viktor Frankl since 1986. We met a number of times. I did a lot for publishing his uh, books in Russian, and I have been awarded uh, the award of Viktor Frankl Foundation of the city of Vienna. So no one can tell me that I'm not loyal to Viktor Frankl ideas. Uh, I was very much disappointed with the uh, confrontational terminology used in legal references uh, as for the relationships between positive psychology and Frankl's ideas and logotherapy. Uh, because uh, I, 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 I'm also a publisher, so I know copyright legislation pretty well. There is no ban, there is no uh, pro ideas are not protected by copyright legislation and words are not protected, only texts. Special formulations are uh, legally protected by international copyright legislation, not ideas. Uh, when Frankl first visited Moscow, I was writing a PhD dissertation on meaning, and then I wrote a habilitation work on meaning. And I have found over, by that time, over 20 different theories of meaning in psychology. Later, this number grew up to 30. Uh, but uh, Frankl was not the only author of the theory of meaning. His theory was belonged to the most elaborated ones. It was definitely the brightest one. And furthermore, Frankl himself was a truly enlightened person, and this is much more than an academic theory. But uh, he cannot be considered a monopolist owner of the idea of meaning of human life. Uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, some prominent thinkers with uh, outside psychology also introduced the ideas of the meaning basis of human activity. Among them, Max Weber, sociologist. Among them, uh, Russian philosophers like uh, Berdyaev, uh, Rozanov, and Frank. There was a mighty tradition of Russian religious philosophy of the early 20th century. Uh, some other authors in psychology, Jung wrote about meaning not so much. Adler has proposed a rather comprehensive theory of meaning, not to mention Leo Tolstoy and other thinkers. And. Uh, uh, this is why uh, uh, the, 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 uh, it seems somewhat artificial to accuse any present-day scholar in, uh, well, uh, not, uh, not paying much uh, attention to Frankl's work. Then about positive psychology. I tried many times, I, I told you that the, the, the problem of meaning was the main uh, direction of my studies. And uh, I uh, uh, was trying, to, uh, we have in Russia very, uh, very mighty original traditions of the study of meaning. My grandfather, Alexei Leontiev, has uh, proposed an elaborated theory of meaning regulation of activity in 1940s. And so we, it, it's something very important and common f f for us, for our tradition. But when I was trying to tell something about this kind of studies abroad in international conferences, I, I, I failed because no one wanted at this time in the 80s and 90s to listen about meaning. And so I uh, had to stop the attempts to speak about meaning and answered and, and trying to, to present some very local studies. But the situation changed, radically changed at about uh, 2000. Since uh, the year 2000, uh, the meaning has uh, become again the, uh, the, legal, the eligible, uh, adequate, or relevant uh, topic of, uh, of of, uh, present, uh, for a presentation at international congresses. And this was 
to a large degree due to positive psychology. I was very much amazed. I was present at the first uh, Washington Summit of, on Positive Psychology in Washington in September 2002 when Martin Seligman proposed this three-party uh, party structure uh, of uh, uh, positive living, including meaningful living, with reference to another genial Austrian, Ludwig Wittgenstein. Uh, and uh, uh, I w have been engaged during the last decade uh, to positive psychology movement, to uh, a notable <laughs> degree. And I can evidence personally that uh, the problems of meaning have been very uh, seriously taken and are seriously taken uh, by, uh, within the positive psychology community. I presented a keynote talk at, uh, in 2004 at European Conference in uh, Milan on positive psychology. Uh, in 2008, I have organized a special symposium on meaning at the First World Congress on positive psychology, and this symposium collected about, par parallel to other events, collected about 400 attendants. It, and it was very well, uh, uh, very well uh, uh, acknowledged and perceived. And now I'm collecting, I'm an associate editor of the Journal of Positive Psychology, and I'm as a guest editor collecting a special issue on meaning. Truly not so many people uh, can deal with meaning. Meaning is a very complicated thing. It cannot be studied in the same way as traits and states. And uh, uh, four years after Seligman announced this idea of meaningful living as one of the levels, uh, when we met at Penn uh, in 2006, I gave him a couple of my reprints on this topic, and he said very sadly, it's so nice that someone still takes meaning seriously. Because the, this idea has not become very popular. Uh, because, because of the objective difficulties uh, to study, uh, studying meaning. But uh, there, is, there is still an intention uh, uh, on the side of positive psychology to, uh, uh, to study those things, to, uh, to uh, do something with meaning. There is a very a large degree of awareness of the importance of this topic. Uh, there are, uh, though, though probably uh, less than 10 persons, one digit number of specialists could I find uh, for this special issue on meaning those who really do some interesting research, but they do some, some really interesting things. And uh, they, are, uh, they uh, refer to Frankl, they highly respect Frankl and logotherapy. And uh, uh, probably there are in, in, in those, uh, those Seligman's bestsellers oriented at a um, uh, popular audience, many important references are lacking. So usually when you write a book uh, addressed to a huge number of people, so you try to cut references. I, I, I will have, I, I, I'm not going to uh, defend Seligman personally, but generally uh, what can be drawn from, from, from this uh, analysis we, we've heard uh, uh, is not just the, the general attitude uh, of positive psychology. And I absolutely agree with the colleague that uh, positive psychology is both an opportunity and a threat because uh, positive psychology is not unite. It, it, it's a very fuzzy movement with very different theoretical approach. There is no single viewpoint of positive psychology. Nothing like this. Seligman's views is one thing. Uh, Chicks and Mihai's views is quite different thing. Say Bob Emmons' views are uh, also something special. Sheldon's views is also something special. So uh, no unified views. Like it was in, with humanistic psychology half a century ago. There was no unified position, only the basic value platform. But within these positions, there have been many uh, some, uh, partly confronting views, but this was a productive confrontation and nothing uh, like a real confrontation uh, just to destroy the opponent. Uh, it's now a growing field with a multitude of possibilities, and I'm trying uh, to do something for uh, 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 for rooting the ideas of meaning, their ideas of uh, existential approach as a part of this positive psychology movement. 
and I feel that I have some success in this. I am now organizing the sixth European Conference on Positive Psychology in Moscow this summer. And uh, I never felt that there was something like a, uh, an opposition or kind of confrontation uh, toward the existential ideas, toward the ideas of logotherapy, toward the ideas of meaning. Nothing like this. The main point is how to, uh, since, the, since um, positive psychology is strictly oriented as uh, rigorous academic criteria of validity and uh, uh, of uh, judgments of uh, inferences, so the point of them how to validate, how to, uh, to make this proper use of uh, different kinds of ideas, including Frankl's ideas, but we had the example, so wonderful studies presented uh, seven years ago at the Congress, at the Centennial Congress by Julius Kuhl, who proposed the very brilliant uh, academic studies that confirmed some ideas uh, proposed by Viktor Frankl, and this, this is published in the book uh, of the 2005 uh, Vienna Congress. So, and uh, uh, the same about reductionism. In some branches of positive psychology, uh, we can really find this nothing but reductionism, but not in all the branches. Uh, there are European-minded persons in this uh, movement, like Csikszentmihalyi, uh, who is uh, very long no more in Ch at Chicago University. Uh, 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 and uh, he, he, he is European by his mind, and he is very far from any reductionism, from any one-sidedness. Uh, well, now I come uh, to my presentation. Uh, probably I have some seven or eight, or eight minutes left for this. Uh, and uh, uh, what I was going to tell is, uh, well, it's generally about the status of logotherapy. Hmm. Uh -huh. what are the, the basic issue is what is logotherapy? Uh, when we say the word psychoanalysis, uh, Freud himself distinguished three meanings of the word psychoanalysis. It's a system of ideas, it's a methodology of revealing hidden context like dream analyzing, art analysis, and it's a practice of mental health improvement. So, as uh, proper uh, as psychotherapy properly, so we we, we can uh, say something about psychoanalysis, and this would be true for psychoanalysis in one meaning of the word, and wrong for the psychoanalysis in another meaning of the word. The same uh, with logotherapy. There are at least at least two ideas. First, logotherapy is a special philosophy and personality theory, and second, it's explicitly defined as a form of psychotherapy. The third, Viennese school of psychotherapy. Well, is it really so? What I mean is that is logotherapy really a, a kind of form of psychotherapy? And I'm proposing uh, somewhat uh, non-traditional view. Uh, the main argument I'm going to propose is the most important, powerful, and valuable, and new in the practice of logotherapy does not belong to the realm of psychotherapy. It constitutes a self-sufficient form of psychological help other than psychotherapy and having a very broad field of application also beyond psychotherapy. Is it a fault of logotherapy or a unique virtue? Irvin Yalom in his brilliant overview in his book on existential psychotherapy uh, noted that logotherapy does not fit well enough to the present-day methodological criteria for psychotherapy that has become much uh, stricter than in Frankl's terms. But this seems to me uh, a unique virtue of logotherapy. The point is not that logotherapy would not fit to the standard criteria of effective psychotherapy, but on the contrary, the point is that these criteria don't fit to logotherapy. Logotherapy is broader than psychotherapy as such. And uh, Jim Bugenthal, another prominent uh, existential psychotherapist and psychologist and another truly enlightened person I was happy to meet in my life, uh, distinguished in, in his book, The Search for Authenticity, two stages in existential psychotherapy. The first, the first, first stage is similar in all the forms of, uh, of uh, dynamic uh, psychotherapy, including psychoanalysis and many others. This is the analytical stage, as Bugenthal calls it, the focus 
uh, of the therapist's work is clients' complaints and inner blocks to uh, elaborate all this. This is uh, a very common thing. But then comes the second stage that is more special and specific for existential approach. Uh, Bugenthal calls this, calls this stage ontogogy, the second stage. And uh, at this stage, the therapist's work is no more uh, uh, work of, of healing, of uh, getting rid of some problems. Uh, it's now aimed at helping the client to get in touch with his or her life, to discover and fulfill the potential of living. And later, Bugenthal uh, changed the, the name uh, for, for his approach. Uh, and this, this second stage on ontology seems to exceed the competence of psychotherapy, and Bugenthal wrote that it's not a therapeutic procedure as such. And first he called this approach uh, existential humanistic psychotherapy, then he uh, started calling it life-changing psychotherapy, and in his last book uh, it was called uh, 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 Can I uh, uh, turn back? Back one slide. Back. And uh, I, uh, uh, in his last book, uh, he called this, he, he called it uh, uh, life coaching, his therapeutic view. What do psychotherapists, in fact, do with their clients? Not just psychotherapy. Uh, in the context of psychotherapy session, they sometimes inform clients, sometimes consult them, teach them, train them, enlighten them. So, uh, is this all psychotherapy? I'm not sure. Uh, psychotherapy today is a, a general cultural model for different forms of person-to-person uh, -person relationships. Uh, 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 just as in, in early age, the pastoral guidance was the all-embracing model for all kinds of human-to-person-to-person -to -person relationship, embraced the functions of teaching, psychotherapy, family counseling, etc. Now, psychotherapy embraces uh, all different kinds of person-to-person uh, of, uh, -person practices. And uh, some uh, professionals, some distinguished professionals, uh, they point out that psychotherapy is more an educational than a medical enterprise. It's an education effort, Bijental said, and this, the word doctor, as some specialists note, is from Latin doctor to teach. And uh, a wonderful, uh, well, in the context of positive psychology, one uh, quotation from uh, Barry Schwartz mm, uh, in the context of positive psychology studies. So uh, he noted that we are coming uh, from the work with patients to the work with clients and then now to the work of students. The people who come to us were first in the position of patients that don't define the goals of what we do with them and the, then clients and now students. Especially, especially uh, this, is, uh, this comes to the fore in existential psychotherapy, including Frank's logotherapy, its ontological aspect, and uh, what is existential and existential psychotherapy is not exactly psychotherapy. What is therapeutic? It's not unique for existential psychotherapy alone. Like Socratic dialogue, Socrates was not psychotherapist. It's an applied philosoph uh, philosophizing, and. Uh, uh, well, uh, there are some other similar practices. I have to uh, end my presentation at 20 seconds more. Philosophical counseling, pastoral counseling, and what Maslow called meta counseling are also the analogs. And Frankl himself uh, has said several times though, that his kind, of works, uh, his kind of work he proposes is not just, uh, uh, is not just psychotherapy, the spiritual dimension is lacking. And uh, logotherapy is something that includes uh, uh, spiritual dimension and edits to psychotherapy. I have tried to elaborate uh, my own form of practice to extract this in a pure form, to extract this ontogogy, I call it life enhancement. Uh, it's, uh, well, but I have absolutely no time to tell anything about it in detail, so I'm sorry, some next time. Thank you for watching.